How's it going everybody and welcome back, this is Wake Run Collapse. I had a very unique experience today and I decided to make it the topic of today's video. So as you know, I've been very strapped for time lately and I had a whole lot of hair that I needed to get rid of. So I finally hunkered down and said, you know, I really need to go to a barber and get this chopped off of my head. Uh, it's getting to the point where it's costing me more time to try to manage it than I'm actually gaining by not going and doing other stuff. So it's like, you know what, I'm gonna just go, we'll go. So I went and I gave specific instructions, three eighths of an inch all the way around, leave the beard alone. The beard was left alone. And I, of course, I can't see without these. So I set them on the table and I asked the guy to just do his thing and we were talking and he, you know, did his thing. And then at the end, I kind of felt the top of my head and said, did you actually take anything off the top? He was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we were just getting to talking. And then he, you know, worked on me for a few minutes, and I went home, and I found the most abhorrent, disastrous haircut I've ever gotten. Seriously, I didn't take any pictures of this. I looked like a douchebag. I couldn't handle it. It was uneven in places. I honestly could have built an arch over the top of my head with some of the hair that was left on there. And so, uh, this particular point, it was about lunchtime, this was about an hour ago, and I was forced to make a decision. I could go back to the same place, cause a scene, and try to get it fixed, and probably wouldn't have gotten it done very much better. Or, I could go to another place, wait in line again, and get my hair cut again, paying twice for it. And it was at this point that historians might say that I made a bold decision. I went home and I got the beard trimmers, and I cut the entirety of my own hair. I feel like it's not that bad, either. Like, it's not even, by any stretch of the imagination, but when it's combed, it looks pretty decent. And I still gotta check the back, which feels right, so I feel like it's not that bad, but I am gonna have to rig up a mirror system to do it. The point is that I did something that I didn't think was possible. I did something rash. Uh, I did something reckless, and it sort of worked out. Am I telling you that you need to go out there and you need to drink 35 beers and then drive 115 miles an hour on the highway? No, because that has absolutely no benefit to you. But in this particular situation, I didn't really have anything to lose. And I wasn't going to hurt anybody else. And I did something that past me would have been way too afraid to try on themselves. And the results were not bad. They are not at the level that they should be from a prof like a professional, so please don't go out there and cut your own hair. Uh, I had no practice, I had no reason, I had no training, and I just decided, you know what, I've thought about this for a while, I bet it's going to look better when I'm done, and it looks way better, but definitely not as good as if you got your own fucking hair cut by a professional. These people were not professionals. Anyways, I've been thinking a lot about the whole Casey Neistat do what you can't kind of thing that he pushed out there a couple years ago and this is something that I couldn't do and yet I did it anyways so you need to address something in your life where you have to go out and do it even though you can't do it because when you're forced to make a decision or you're forced to get something done your capabilities just rise to the surface and sometimes you end up cutting your own hair and calling your fiance and saying hey how bad does this look from the back which I'm about to find out in any event, thank you for watching, and go out there and do what you can't.